Greetings, welcome to the Narrowest Christ for Nations. I am Brother Azana TV. Today we are considering the topic, the cost of entering the kingdom of God. Is there a cost? Does it actually cost anything? After all, salvation is free. Jesus Christ has died. And he has given us this free gift of life. Is there anything entering into the kingdom of heaven cost us? This is what we want to talk about today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to hear from you. We ask that you open our eyes, open our ears, give us true understanding of the truth. Help us to understand the real truth that Jesus handed over to the apostles, that the apostles handed over that to us. Lord, heal our hearts of every dullness. Take away our guilt, take away our misunderstanding, our short-sightedness, and give us wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of the truth. Let your world come out with power to heal and deliver us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before we continue, please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to share this video with someone. And the Lord will bless you as you do so. A lot of people actually believe that once you're saved, you're saved forever. And you don't have anything to do. All you just need to do is just confess Jesus Christ with your mouth. And that's everything that is required. But what does the Bible actually say? Is there cost? Is there any cost? in following Jesus and in entering the kingdom of God is there any cost at all? Let's look at the Bible. The Bible is the answer to every doctrinal issue. Matthew 13, 14, 44 to 46. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden of feet the wish when a man had found had hid him, he hid it, and for joy thereof covered and sell it all that he had, and buy it the field, buy it that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls, who, when he had found one, of great price went and sold all that he had and got it. One thing that is common to these two parables of Jesus Christ about the kingdom of God is that these people sold everything they had and bought this treasure. They sold everything. Listen, he said again, this is a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pets. These two people sold everything they had and what did they do they went for these treasures it cost them everything it cost them everything they had they sold everything as a matter of fact the one that found this hidden treasure when he found it He went and he hided it. He, this man hid it. <laughs> he hid it and for joy thereof, 
He was so joyful that when he found it, he didn't steal it. There is no shortcut to heaven. <laughs> there are some that believe that, oh, you just add one or two things together and boom, you are in heaven. It, it's not like that. There is a process. You don't steal it. This man found it and he hid it. There are some of us that play with our salvation. We play, I mean, gamble with our salvation. This man did not play with it. When he found it in the field, first of all, listen, this treasure was hidden in a field. He was finding it. He was looking for it. And when he found it, he searched for it. When he found it, that it was hidden in a field, he took it and hid it more. Because it is so precious. The gospel is hidden in the eyes of those who are in the world. Those who are perishing. So when you find this truth, you hide it in the secret place of your heart and make sure that you keep it out of the reach of people. I mean, you keep your salvation, your heart, your faith. What you've come to believe, hide it from people so that nobody toys with it so that nobody plays with it, so that nobody confuses you. So this man sold everything. These two people, they sold everything. And they bought it. This is what the kingdom of God can cost you. It is very, very important. It cost these two people everything they had sold everything. Now look at what Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says. This is Jesus Christ talking here. He said, but seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now this is Jesus talking. He said, the kingdom of God is so precious, is so important that you don't need to seek your life first. You don't need to seek money first. You don't need to seek your your comfort first. What you're gonna wear, what you, uh, your life, what you will eat, where you will stay, housing. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing, including life, security will be added unto you. This is what the kingdom of God cost you. It cost you the time of saving your life. The kingdom of God cost you the time of clothing yourself. The kingdom of God cost you the time of seeking daily bread. You have to make sure you are sure of this kingdom first before you can pursue other things. The kingdom of God is very, very important that if you are to choose between life and death, Jesus says, choose the kingdom of God. If you meet with people who are persecuting you, jihadists, and they ask you, life or death, if you choose to leave, you accept Islam and accept Prophet Muhammad. But if you choose Christianity and choose Jesus Christ, you will die. Jesus is saying, let the kingdom of God cost you your life. 
that is saying the cost of entering the kingdom are you among those who want to be in the kingdom of heaven yet you don't want the kingdom to cost you anything are you among those people the kingdom of god as a matter of fact when you were saved and you want to enter the kingdom you must be ready to face persecution you must be ready to face trials and temptations the kingdom of god takes away your national comfort it takes away your resolution to enjoy life it takes away your resolution to pay back it takes away when you've made up all your mind that oh i'm not going to take this nonsense when you have done all your resolution when you have resolved to retaliate the kingdom of god takes away that retaliation there are times you are offended so badly that you feel and you are on your right and you just want to pay back but when you remember where you are going to the call of god upon your life when you remember that you are on a journey not just to live a successful life but to end up in the bosom of the lord you forgive even without being asked for forgiveness you forgive while crying have you ever forgiven crying you shedding tears is taking your heart but you have no other option in your crying you can say no you want to pay back it's time for you to revenge and this revenge is legal but for the sake of the kingdom you just let go <laughs> the kingdom of god costs you everything it costs the whole world entering this kingdom costs everything i remember that young man he had been keeping the laws of god he had been following everything jesus actually loved him but jesus told him it remains one thing you want to be perfect do this one thing i know you are rich go sell everything you have not just selling them give them to the poor and come and follow me and then this young man was very sorrowful that was the last time we heard about him in the bible there is no further record of this young man doing an exploit for god no he went he left and jesus christ told the disciples that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god what has this call to salvation cost you has it cost you end you could be sick and your people having the same ailment the same kinds of diseases your own your case could even be lighter and then you see the same people having the same problem go before a witch doctor and they get healed and they come before you to tell you like the friends of job why don't you just do it you can still go to church after all nobody will know go to the before the witch doctor get your healing why are you still trusting god why don't you just submit after all god knows god understands a cousin of mine was to graduate from school but she had a problem 
a lecturer wanted to sleep with her and because of that the lecturer feared her her name is Grace my first cousin she said no I I I I can't do it the lecturer said okay that means you are going to fail two years later she was asked to rewrite the same paper and you know what the same lecturer will be the one to mark a script and she had no money she told me I said well because of your faith I would have to borrow money so I went borrowed the school fees and she, she is to pay the school fees of that year so I borrowed some money 40,000 naira from a young man called Gosta Imodu. I took this money from her, from him, and gave it to her. She was to pay the school fees on Thursday. And on Tuesday, she was told that the missing script had been found. A God fought for her. She graduated two years late. But you know that it wouldn't have cost her more than probably at most one hour. But it cost her 365 years times two. Two years before she graduated. What has the kingdom of God cost you as a believer? Has it cost you anything? Me? <laughs> it has cost me almost everything. <laughs> you may not understand. The call of God and the kingdom of God has cost me almost everything. One day, our bishop invited me to his office. I'm talking about the bishop of Worry Diocese, Anglican Communion, Right Reverend Christian Eden. And I told him, if the Lord tells me today that Hosanna, the one you've worked for me, is enough, I will be glad. I would go and throw a party. I would throw a party and, and be happy. And he looked at me and asked me, what did you just say? And I told him, I told him, my problem actually started the day God called me. From that day, I have never, never been a free man. I lost my will. I lost the, my plans for my life. I lost a lot of things. I don't want to talk about my personal issues, but I tell you, I lost a lot of things. <sighs> what has the kingdom of God cost you? But you know that even after losing so much, if I don't carry my cross daily, I could still end up in hell. The kingdom of God can cost you everything. It cost Job everything he had, including his skin. It cost him everything. What has the kingdom of God cost you? Do you know that there are some people who go to church, they go before the offering bowl, they drop their offering, that they could drop like a lower denomination, like a dollar, and pick one hundred dollar bill. <laughs> People are giving; you are taking from God. <laughs> there are some when they face persecution, they come to church and they say, "Man of God, I pay my tithes. I do this. Is this what God is paying me with?" <laughs> what have you seen? 
what have you faced? Have you been cast into the fire? What have you faced? That you were picking offense already? Well, you are not the first. John the Baptist faced the same thing. He was caught, cast into prison. And instead of Jesus to go to him, Jesus went further. And he sent his disciples to go and ask Jesus Christ. Go and ask him that, haven't you heard? I've been thrown into prison. I came to testify about you. I came to prepare the way for you. I have been thrown into prison and I, at least, I expect some level of concern like you sending some people to me or even come to rescue me. You have influence. You do miracles. Why don't you do, at least I have told people about you. Why don't you come? You can perform miracles in the palace of Herod. And if you tell him to set me free, he will set me free. If he says, no, you have power to break these chains. I made people believe in you. Why don't you come and make people believe in me also? Should we expect another one? Because the one I came to introduce has power. He's a work of miracles. He can send me free. He has power. He has influence. Are you really the Christ? Or should we expect another one? Are you? I supposed to be a priest. Because my father is a high priest. I am born into priesthood. I supposed to be a priest. I supposed to feel from I supposed to feed from the altar. I supposed to be one of those who receive the tithe. I supposed to be a priest and offer sacrifices in the temple. I supposed to get married and have my own children. I supposed to eat normal food. I supposed to wear linen clothes. I supposed to live in a good house. My father is more poor. I supposed to enjoy the good things of life. I supposed to receive honor. But I lived in the desert, feed myself with honey and grasshopper. I live in a cave. I don't put on normal clothes. I, I wear garment skin. I, I wear a, a garment skin for a garment. I never lived in sin, not married with children, no children. At least being born by a priest and by parents in their old age, they expect me to get married in time and nothing like that. I gave up everything for you. And this is me, I'm in prison. You are not coming to save me. Why? Are you really the Christ? Or should we expect another one? Lord, may our humanity not decrease our spiritual senses. Amen. John spoke according to his humanity, not according to the Spirit of God. When he once spoke by the Spirit, when they met him and told him, Oh, you remember that man you baptized in the river Jordan? Everybody is going to him. John said, Oh, so you haven't been 
listening to me all this while. This man you see, because of him I come to show the way to people, to prepare his way and show people the way to him. Listen, he must increase and I must decrease. Now it is time for John to decrease. And Jesus didn't do anything. Jesus didn't tell him, he didn't tell him, or tell him I'm the one. He said, <laughs> by the fruit you shall know them. He applied the scripture. The scripture of by the fruit you shall know them. He said, go and tell him. What you have seen and heard. <laughs> the blind see, the lame, they walk, the deaf, they hear. And the gospel of the kingdom, the sincere milk of the word, is preached to the poor. Blessed is he who is not offended at me. Are you offended? Are you offended? Are you facing persecution and you are offended? Are you paying the price or you are picking offense? Are you picking offense or you are paying the price? There is a price to pay. There is a race to run. There is a faith to defend. There is a time of trial. There is a time of loneliness. There is a time that what you profess with your mouth will be put to test. There is a time your faith will pass through the fire so that all the dross, all the earth, the earthen part of it can fall off and it remains a pure gold that has been tried in the fire. There is a time of rejection. There is a time of Lamar Sabatani. Why have you forsaken me? There is a time. Are you? giving up on your faith or you are still standing are you a hypocrite or you are serious are you confessing my Christ with your mouth yet he is not in your heart if he's not in your heart you're deceiving yourself you will fall when temptation comes Seek the kingdom of God with everything at the expense of everything. Now listen. As of Apostles chapter 14, 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exalting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation is a must. It is not a probability. It is a must. We must through much, not just few, much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Make up your mind. Christianity is not butter and bread. No. Um, let me read Revelation. 12 11 and they overcame him by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death they loved not their lives unto the death 
in your resistance against evil against Satan in your battle to win the crown of glory don't love your life in the battle of eternal life go with your life and don't be scared of losing it in the face of persecution don't hide your physical life at the expense of your spiritual life be focused and don't give up on your God this is what Jesus Christ says and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily daily take it daily not monthly daily every day take up your cross Christians take up your cross it doesn't matter what you face take up this cross daily daily and follow take up your cross daily and follow who told you there are no times to cry there are times to cry as believers <laughs> there are times of La Masa Bhaktani. There are times to cry. There's time for everything. There's a season for every activity in the world. There's a time of joy. There is a time of sorrow. Be prepared for all seasons. Forget about this feel good gospel. It won't take you into the kingdom of God. All the apostles preach this same message I'm preaching right now. They preached it. They never said everything will be good. Jesus Christ never said so. He said, if you can't deny yourself, you can never, can never be my disciples. And even all the disciples preached the same gospel. And they surrounded they surrounded their lives at the feet of Jesus Christ. Stephen did. He stoned him to death. It would have been very possible for him to escape that death. But he chose to die. The kingdom of God will cost you everything you have. It will cost you your family. It will cost you your job. It will cost you your money. It will cost you your 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 health it will cost you everything they don't give up this is the same gospel paul preached he said in second timothy chapter 3 verse 12 yeah and all that we live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution it is a must today a lot of people don't want to suffer persecution People are compromising their faith. If that, if you are ashamed of Jesus Christ on earth, if you are ashamed of the truth, if you are ashamed of the gospel that saved you, it will be ashamed of you in the presence of God and in the presence of the holy angels of God. If you are ashamed to carry your cross on a daily basis and fall, if you are ashamed to deny yourself of the loss of the flesh, he will deny you on that day. If you are ashamed to preach the good news, to testify of your faith, in your workplace he will deny you on that day the lord is calling us to repentance and to a better dedication for many of us he has found our work not worthy before god Matthew chapter 8, 34 to 38. And also when he had called the, the people unto him, 
with his disciples also. He said unto them, Whomsoever we come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Some of you are following Jesus Christ, but no cross. You have no cross. Because to you the cross is too heavy. It is a wooden, rugged cross. You need a golden cross. You don't want to follow. It is too heavy for you. It's too it's too old. You need uh, some of you are going to Calvary with a very light and plastic cross. Fashionable cross that can survive the fire of temptation. Your cross, if it can carry you through when you are lifted up in Calvary, if it can't bear your weight, it will break. The cross that Jesus Christ carried was able to carry him and hold him up until he handed over his spirit to God. Some of you, you are going to Calvary with a cross that can't bear your weight. Some of you, you are going to Calvary empty-handed, but the Calvary, the place called Golgotha, the place of Calvary is a place of crucifixion. The place of Calvary is not a place of butter and bread. It is a place of crucifixion. Some of you are going there because you want to take selfie. You are not going there because you want to be crucified. It is a place you surrender everything to God. It is a place you commit your spirit into the hands of your maker. Let's move on. 35. For whomsoever, for whosoever we save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and for the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall he profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he come in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Have you taken up your cross? Are you following? Are you following? Or you have given up on your faith? Are you following? Are you neither here nor there? Are you serving God on and mammon at the same time? You just have to submit to one and submit fully. Are you partly in the kingdom of darkness and partly in the kingdom of God? Are you partly obeying the flesh and partly obeying God? No. Let the kingdom of God cost you your whole will. Let the kingdom cost you everything. What has the kingdom of God cost you as a believer? What sacrifice have you paid? How much of your money do you use to sponsor God's kingdom? How much of your money do you use to preach the gospel? There are some people you preach to, they tell you, Oh, I love clothes. I would have gone to church. I would have accompanied you. Do you go out of your way to give them some of your clothes? Or do you spend some money to buy them clothes? How many people have you given Bible? Bibles to copies of the Bible. How many? How many of you are sincere in your belief? How many of you are sincere? How many of you? 
are sincere and you can defend your faith with everything you have. I live in a country where those who call themselves Christians join different secret societies before they believe because they believe that if they don't do that they won't excel in government they won't excel in politics and when they get there they become even more wicked than the devil himself at least when people sell their souls to devil to the devil he gives them wealth he gives them he gives them fame but here they grab everything to themselves and yet they go to church and profess to be Christians. I'm not saying every politician is, but majority of them, this is who they are. Brethren, have you surrendered everything? Is the kingdom of God cost you some things right now? And you are asking God, God, why me? The Bible says it will cost you everything. Is it costing you things? And you are about looking back. Let's pray. Lord, you have called us into this kingdom. Not to be lukewarm, but to be soldiers. Soldiers, they put all their minds on the victory, on winning wars, and not about what they get. They leave the whole of their families, and they go to the battlefield with their lives. They don't leave their lives at home. They don't go there to run away. Lord, help us to be good soldiers of the cross. Increase our faith, O oh God. Increase our faith, O oh God. Increase our faith. Help us to stand for you in the times of trial. The things you want us to give to you, help us to give them. The sacrifices you want us to make, help us to make them. Lord, I want to live for you. You are Lord. Please help to live for you. I said I will give all my money to the poor and also to the work of the kingdom. Help me to do so, never to change my mind in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, O oh Lord, and help us. Help us to be true. Help us to be faithful to your work in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty Savior. We love you. Help us to demonstrate this love through perseverance. Help us to demonstrate this love the way we live our lives daily. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us remember those who are in trouble, those who are sick, those who are in prison, those who are facing one temptation or the other. Lord, be for them. Those who are passing through temptations, I pray for them. May the Lord take you out of that trouble. May the Lord take you out of that temptation. May the Lord take you out of that problem in the name of, this, of Jesus Christ. Thank you for answering us, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Those of you who have been supporting us, may the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you and increase you on a daily basis. Um, a lot of people don't like the truth, so they don't want to support the truth. Those of you who support us, may the Lord God Almighty answer you, answer all your prayers and also support you until you enter the kingdom. Your reward will never be in vain. If there are areas of your life you need God to help you to overcome your weaknesses, 
May the power of God meet you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge you will face it, may the Lord take them away. May what you are passing through not be above what you can handle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kindly subscribe to this channel, Hosanna in ETV. And don't forget to share this video with someone. If you have any question, feel free to contact me. Those of you who are in the US, our account details are on the screen and they are also in the description box. Feel very free to support the work we're doing. May the Lord bless you.